नमस्री अतिराजाय विवेकानंद सूर सच्ची सुख स्वरूपाय स्वामी ने तापुहारिने स्वामी सर्वोत्तमानंद जी दि वाइस चांसलर ऑफ द एस्टीम रामकृष्ण मिशन विवेकानंद एजुकेशनल एंड रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट आर के एम भेरी स्वामी कालेशानंद रेजिस्ट्रार ऑफ दिस एस्टीमड इंस्टीट्यूट स्वामी गरीष्ठानंद द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव हेड ऑफ आर के एम भेरी सब कैम्पास एट कयम्बातुर स्वामी निर्मलेशानंद डॉक्टर एन मुतया लर्नेड मेम्बार्स अफ द फैकल्टी ब्रदमस ब्रह्मचारिन्स and very very dear students it's a matter of great joy that the 18th convocation ceremony for the students of the Coimbatore Camp campus of Park Emperi is being held today firstly i would like to congratulate our dear students for their excellent performances in the bsc physical education B.Sc. Agricultural Honours, B.Ed. Special Education, B.P.Ed. Physical Education, M.Sc. C.S.A., M.Sc. Data Science, M.Ed. Special Education, M.P.Ed. Physical Education, and Integrated B.Ed. and M.Ed. programs. All the above put together, 228 students from Coimbatore off campus. will receive their degrees today i congratulate all concerned here now coming to my convocation address in the capacity of the chancellor of this dm to be university i remember nelson mandela the first black president of south africa who once said i quote destroying any nation doesn't require the use of atom bombs or long range missiles it only require lowering the quality of education and allowing cheating in the examination the result is that patient dies at the hand of doctors building collapses at the hands of engineers money is lost at the hands of economists and accountants justice is lost at the hand of judges the collapse of education is the collapse of the nation education is a process of acquiring knowledge skills and values in formal and informal settings it has been always been the cornerstone of a nation's progress and development in the context of india a country with a rich and diverse history the evolution of its education system reflects the changing social political and economic landscape india this motherland of ours has always been a cradle of knowledge and civilization since the dawn of history swami vivekananda said i quote as i look back upon the history of my country i do not find in the whole world another country which has done quite so much for the improvement of human kind and quote in his lecture I again quote India's gift to the world delivered at Brooklyn New Year in 1895 Swami ji says India has given to antiquity the earliest scientific physicians and according to Sir William Hunter she has even contributed to modern medical science by the discovery of various chemicals and by teaching you how to reform misshapen ears and noses even more it has done in mathematics for algebra geometry astronomy and the term of modern science mixed mathematics were all invented in india just so much as the 10 numerals the very cornerstone of all present civilization were discovered in india and are in reality sanskrit words In philosophy we are even now head and shoulder above any other nation as Schopenhauer 
the great German philosopher, has confessed in music, India gave to the world her system of notation with the seven cardinal notes and the diatonic scale, all of which we enjoyed as early as 350 BC, while it came to Europe only in the 11th century. In philology, our Sanskrit language is now universally acknowledged to be the foundation of all European languages, which in fact are nothing but jargonized Sanskrit. In literature, our epics and poems and dramas rank as high as those of any language. Our Sakuntala was summarized by Germany's greatest poet as human and earth united. India has given to the world the fables of Ishap, which were copied by Ishap from an old Sanskrit book, Hitopodesha. It has given the Arabian Nights in manufacture. India was the first to make cotton and purple dye. It was proficient in all works of jewelry and the very word sugar as well as the article itself is the product of India. Lastly, she has invented the game of chase and the curse and the dice. So great, in fact, was this superiority of India in every respect that it drew to her borders the hungry cohorts of Europe and thereby indirectly brought about the discovery of America. The Indian education system produced great scholars such as Charaka, Sushruta, Aryabhatta, Brahamida, Bhaskaracharya, Brahmagupta, Chanakka, Chakrapani Dattva, Madhava, Panini, Patanjali, Nagarjuna, Gautama, Pingala, Sankaradeva, Maitri, Gargi, and Tiru Valuvar, among numerous others who made seminal contributions to the world knowledge in diverse fields such as mathematics, astronomy, metallurgy, medical science, surgery, civil engineering, architecture, shipbuilding, navigation, yoga, fine arts, chess and more. But there was a time when India lost its primacy in education, in arts, in music, in science, in mathematics and so on. While India went into slumber, the world marched ahead. Age of enlightenment bypassed India, liberty, equality, fraternity, reason, tolerance, human rights, application of scientific method to social and political thinking, rejection of superstition, the ideas which transformed the Western society and lead to industrial age didn't touch our shores nor disturb our slumber. This slumber was broken when an unknown young man of 30 years appeared in Chicago at the inaugural meeting of the Parliament of Religions in September 1893. In the words of Sister Nivedita, I again quote, and as he spoke, in the youth and noonday of the West, a nation sleeping in the shadows of the darkened half of the earth, on the far side of the Pacific, waited in spirit for the words that would be born on the dawn that was traveling towards them to reveal to them the secret of their own greatness and strength." Unquote. Roma Rola, the French Nobel laureate, calls this as the Lazarus comfort moment for India. He asked, I quote, did the dead arise? Did India, thrilling to the sound of his words, reply to the hope of her herald? Was her noisy enthusiasm translated into deeds? and himself answers. India was hauled out of the shifting sense of barren speculation 
wherein she had been engulfed for centuries by the hand of one of her own sannyasins and the result was that the whole reservoir of mysticism slipping beneath broke its bounds and sprayed by a series of great ripples into action the waste thought to be aware of the tremendous synergies liberated by this means the world finds itself face to face with an awakening india in huge prostrate body lying along the whole length of the mains peninsula stretching its limbs and collecting its scattered forces and coat failure to pay heed to swami vivekananda's teachings while formulating education policies from the time of independence is the cause of many of the ills that is affecting our education system today swami ji's scheme of education aims to create a band of men and women who would combine in their lives the spiritual idealism of the east and the material practicality of the west i called can you become an occidental of occidental senior spirit of equality freedom work and energy swami ji asked and he answered i again quote this is to be done and we will do it you are all born to do it Rama Krishna Mission suffers in starting various educational institutions to teach the secular subjects like modern sciences, technology, vocational oriented sciences, arts, English etc. on the one hand and the spiritual subjects like the ancient Upanishads, Sanskrit, Vedic literature etc. on the other was to create a complete human being. all round and fully developed in the three h heart head and hand we must have life building man making character building assimilation of ideas what we want is that education by which character is formed strength of mind is increased the intellect is expanded and by which one can stand on one's feet and quote das swami ji has given us the road map for future The future of education in India holds promise but also demands radical changes. Here are some key areas that need attention. Number 1, holistic learning. Shifting from a focus on rote memorization to holistic learning that fosters creativity, critical thinking and problem solving skills. 2, technology integration. leveraging technology for personalized learning digital resources and online courses to bridge educational gaps especially in rural areas three vocational education encouraging vocational and skill based training to equip with students with practical skills making them job ready four inclusive education ensuring inclusivity for marginalized communities and addressing gender disparities in education five quality assurance implementing stringent quality standards for both public and private educational institutions to maintain a high level of education six research and innovation encouraging research and innovation at all levels of education to promote scientific and technological advancements seven teacher training investing in teacher training programs to ensure the educators are well equipped to impart modern and relevant knowledge the education 2030 framework for action which was adopted by 184 unesco member states including india six to quoted and show inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all by 2030 quoted to achieve this lofty goal our country has formulated national education policy 2020 after extensive consultations across the country with all stakeholders including ramakrishna mission the nep 2020 taking cue from swami ji's teaching lays particular emphasis on the development of all creative and potential of each individuals 
It advocates the development of not only the cognitive capacities, but also social, ethical and emotional capacities and dispositions of the students. It presents a roadmap to develop an education system that nurtures good human beings capable of rational thought and action, possessing compassion and empathy, courage and resilience, scientific temper and creative imagination with sound ethical moorings and values. It aims at producing engaged, productive and contributing citizens for building an equitable, inclusive and pluralistic society as envisaged by our constitution. The education system should facilitate the harmonious development of the personality where sufficient avenues are available for the channeling of the human energies in a constructive and creative manner. It should ensure the training of the mind to will rightly and efficiently, of the heart to feel nobly and expansively, for the brain to think clearly and logically and the organs to function effectively and moderately. Speaking about the ceremony, Swami Vivekananda said, I again quote, what we want are western science coupled with Vedanta, Brahmacharya as the guiding motto and also Shraddha and faith in one's own self. In a lecture delivered by Dr. Abul Kalam, the former president of India, on 11 September 2012 at Ramakrishna Mission, New Delhi, said, I quote, We have seen that the seeds of peace in the world have their origin in the righteousness in the heart of every individual. Such righteous citizens lead to the evolution of enlightened society. Education with value system has to be so designed that the righteousness in the heart is developed in young minds. That should be the mission of education. Parents and teachers must inculcate moral leadership amongst children. It requires the ability to have insights into the uniqueness and universality of human consciousness. True education is the acquisition of enlightened feelings and enlightened powers to understand daily events and to understand the permanent truth leaking man to his environment, human and planetary. In 1994, UNESCO formed the International Commission on Education. Its chairman was Jacques Delors of France. That's why the report of this commission is familiar as Delors Commission Report. That report bears a wonderful title. Learning the treasure within, that is, there is gold in our heart and the effort to excavate that gold is education. The gold that is in the heart, the attempt to bring it out, that is education. Learning the treasure within, the Taylor's Commission says that in the coming 21st century, education would face many crises or in the words of the Dailers Commission, we will be facing this tension throughout this century. Without understanding these tensions, one can't understand why the National Education Policy 2020 has to be brought. What are these tensions? Firstly, the tension between the global and the local. How can we become world citizens without losing our doors? Secondly, Tension between the universal and the individual, that's how can the globalization of relations enrich the unique character of each individual. Thirdly, tension between tradition and modernity, that is, how can we adjust with the fast changes of sciences and technologies without turning our backs on the past? In another language, we need to be modern but not at the expense of our tradition. Fourthly, tension between the long-term and short-term considerations, that is, how can we create policies that require persistent strategies in a world sustained by momentariness? The immediate need may be to construct a building, but to meet that immediate need, it must be seen that there are many valuable trees there. They have to be cut down, 
Even if the immediate needs are met, we will suffer in the long run. This is a crisis that the education has to deal with. Fifthly, tension between extraordinary expansion of knowledge through electronic gadgets and human beings, capacity to assimilate it. Every one of us has a mobile phone, but there is a limit to how much information we can digest. This tension is going on with us. Lastly, tension between the spiritual and the secular. That is, how can we encourage each and every one in accordance with their traditions and convictions to fully respect spiritual pluralism? To lift our minds and spirit to the plane of transcendental, that's how in the stage of extreme competitions, we can realize that unselfishness is God. The language of the Day Lord's Commission is wonderful. We find the goals of Swami Vivekananda in this report. The National Education Policy 2020 is an attempt to address these tensions mentioned by Day Lord's Commission. At the end of my oration, I sincerely wish that the issues raised in my deliberation be pondered over discussed, debated, be reflected upon and above all be envisioned by the Lord's speakers during their respective talks. I earnestly pray for the commendable success of this convocation. Before I wrap up, I must thank Swami Atma Priyanandaji, the secretary of the RKM Bhairi Center and pro-chancellor of this deemed to be university for having remembered me for this excellent occasion. I must congratulate our learned Vice Chancellor Swami Sarbottamanandaji and the administrative head of Kaibatur campus Swami Gorishthanandaji for successfully organizing this convocation and that too in style. Before taking leave of you, once again I must congratulate the students who will receive degrees today at this convocation. All the best to all of you. Thank you so very much.